Coast perspective, good morning. <clears throat> and uh, from an East Coast, just good afternoon. While uh, many of our top leaders are in uh, Fiji and, and Australia, um, I am back here holding the fort. This is how you know when, when life is so good that you don't, once in a while, you, you pass up a free trip. Before I get into uh, the things we're going to talk about today, I want to just express um, some of the feelings in my heart in relation to a bunch of teammates who really got hit by Harvey in Houston and homes got flooded. Um, I know one team that had over 20 teammates who, who uh, had their homes flooded. And we've had others, of course, in, uh, in Florida with uh, Irma. In fact, Cindy was just communicating with one spouse. They're direct, one, of, one of our leaders, um, CEOs, is on their way back to their house, hope they can find enough gas to get there. And uh, anyway, I just a lot has gone on that's been a real hardship for people, those of us who are away from it. Um, it's easy not to think about it, but for those who might be on this call who have suffered from some of those things, I want you to know that Cindy and I have been praying for you, and we've been thinking about you, and, and uh, anyway, we followed our church's efforts in that area. I know our church had over 11,000 people uh, come into the Houston area to help people clear out their houses to try and get them dried out before the black mold can take hold. Because that's a secondary effect. It's bad enough having your stuff ruined in, in a lot of ways with a flood, but then this black mold comes in in these humid climates and tears it up. It's an issue we don't have here. And so I want you to, and all the rest of you, be prepared to pray for California when the, we get our next big earthquake. You know, everybody's got something. And uh, and I, that's the kind of time we need to kind of help each other. And, you know, and anyway. That's that's the thought I wanted to share, <clears throat> and I appreciate the power of adversity in our lives. We always learn things about ourselves and others, but I tell you what, it'd be nice to avoid some of these kind of things if we could in these natural disasters that seem to crop up. But uh, the rest of us need to count our blessings, be grateful for the adversity we don't have in our lives right now, and and. Uh, and let our hearts be softened for those are that, that, that are going through tough times. All right, now we're going to talk about being a more likable leader. It's interesting how casually this can be treated by some people in the lack of understanding the power of this in our lives, in every aspect of our lives. Um, and let me address it first in a little bit of a spiritual from a little bit of a spiritual perspective and orientation, we don't want to become more likable as a technique, though it has power from a, that perspective. But the reality is true likability, just like kindness and gratitude and generosity and thoughtfulness all come from the heart. And they enter our heart because we begin to believe that they're important, that they're of great value. The virtue and the motivations and actions that come from it are their own reward. They have great purpose in our lives and great value in the lives of others. But you really do need to be a believer. Now, I'd rather you work on likability while your heart's getting squared away um, than not work on it at all. Um, is there any such thing as a nice jerk? I guess there is. Um, there's such a thing as a nice paint job on a car that doesn't work very well. I guess that would be an appropriate analogy. But for it really to matter... You know, it's, it's, it's got to come from a place where we truly believe, we know, 
that it's important to treat people right, that it is the most lucid and obvious reflection of our character, and, and it's worth the effort. Um, I know, I don't know that I am likable. You know, self-assessment's always risky. I'd have to ask the people around me. Um, sometimes I'm likable. Sometimes I use a little more forcefulness of, of personality to get certain things done. But the reality is I embrace the, the need for kindness and honesty and integrity and all of these things in our dealings with each other and, um, and knowing that nothing really sustainable is going to get built without putting it together this way. And so let's go ahead and talk about this. Um, and let's, let's strive to be, when we're done, more likable for all the right reasons. You know, not, not for popularity, though that's, a, that's, a, that's an after effect or an aftershock, to use it in California earthquake terms. It is a perk of likability that, that we will be more popular, but we'll feel better about ourselves. You know, and we'll know we're we're helping people the way we we should with this kind of thing. You wish you could retain people better, be more likable. You wish you had fewer pre people problems in your organization, be more likable. You wish sometimes maybe for some of you that people didn't want to transfer from your, from your team, be more likable. Now, I had a very likable leader early on in my business, very early on, right the first few months. But he wasn't competent enough, you know. He wasn't bold enough to go with his likability, and it and it cost him. And uh, I be, I was this person's exchange leg, and I was glad I was. And um, and so I want you to add other things to it. But right now, there are a number of you that have some of those things, and boy, do you need to become more likable. And I just think you know all of this adds up to a happier life which is all the big bottom line, isn't it? Okay, let's go to our first slide after our intro slide here. Let's talk about trust versus likability. It's just a, a way of looking at this that I think is interesting that we can, we can share together here. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pose a question. Is being trusted more important than being liked? All right. Is being trusted more important than being liked? We can think about that. Or another question, or is being liked more important than trust or being trusted? Now, I would certainly defend trust is a heck of a lot more important than being liked. Right? Like is not nowhere near as deep as trust, and trust is more prominent. But that doesn't mean you're choosing one or the other. And here's what I mean. The real question is, which one comes first? Interesting thought. Because liking somebody requires less effort and less commitment than trusting somebody, you know, I think it's probably true that if you are likable, that likability will lead to something else. Let's, let's give this... Uh, a comparison or another analogy in questions to ponder. It shows an actor there, right, wearing a sweater and says, hey, girl, feel my sweater. Know what it's made of? Boyfriend material, which is just a sleazy line. You better already know somebody before you use that one. <laughs> and, and, uh, and we can all laugh at you. Um, I'm not sure that question would make you likable. But, let's, but it gets us into the analogy. Is it trust that gets a woman to exchange phone numbers with a man? So let's, let's, let's talk about that. So you're somewhere and you see somebody you like. Now I'm going to say obviously that you're single. I'm a married man. I only see Cindy in this context. But let's say I'm single and I'm meeting people and I see someone that I think I'd like to talk to and get to know a little better. I'm interested. And I get up there and... 
can, in that short period of time, can I really get somebody to trust me? No, what I can do is make a good first impression because the next question is, I think the answer to the first one is trust that gets a woman to change phone numbers with a man. Not really. You know, trust is something, we'll talk more about it, that's earned over time. Is it trust that gets a potential prospect to want to meet with you and do business? And they don't know you or they hardly know you at all. And so the reality is in both of those scenarios, you're not really having trust as a major factor, right? What you hope to do is get them to the point they'll be interested enough and feel good enough about you. Now, this is more relating to the marketplace, but this has great application to your team also, right, in, in the relationships there. Because people are going to be bringing all kinds of people to you over the weeks and months and years ahead. And you want to deliver for them as best you can. But the reality of this thing You know, will you do me a favor out there? We're seeing some people that are saying they can't hear. And, um, but we got almost over a thousand locations on this call. And I'm wondering, okay, we're getting a bunch of yeses. Okay. Great. We're good. You can stop. <laughs> we're getting hundreds of yeses. Thank you, everybody. You're awesome. Someone just sent four zeros. I'm not sure what that meant. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Chinese character perhaps. Okay, got it. Um, it's not a zero. It's like a rectangle. Okay, and then Jocelyn has no audio. Call in, Jocelyn. Anyway, I'm back to it. And I, I, I regret for the handful of you that can't hear that you can't hear of course, if you can't hear, you didn't hear me ask the question either, now that I think about it. I'm feeling kind of stupid right now. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad some of you can hear. <laughs> and, uh, and, oh, shoot. Anyway, I'm amazed sometimes that I became successful in this business with the limited brain power I evidence on a regular basis. All right. <clears throat> So back to it. To ask those questions again and get back on track, is it trust that gets a woman to exchange phone numbers with a man? Is it trust that gets a potential prospect to want to meet with you in your business? Or is it the fact that they liked you, first liked you, right? That they liked you first. It seems like a nice person. When I was sitting um, in my first meetings with the guy who would become my first kind of senior leader, and that was just in the base shop. He's an SMD. And he talked, and he told a few corny jokes, and he was older and had little spectacles, and he had such a great smile. He was so obviously a good man. Um, he'd been a chaplain in the Navy, and he was just a good-hearted, spiritual guy, loving husband, father, all of that. I liked him enjoyed being around him. I have a warm feeling in my heart now as I contemplate him, and he's been gone a number of years now. But it's just, I liked him. It made it so much easier for me to take the next step, to move into closer association. As I got to know him better, I trusted him and liked him. All right? But let's, let's talk a minute about the value of each. Part the, there's a partnership between trust and likability. Look, the number one reason, in my opinion, Cindy and I have been successful is when ultimately we became very trustworthy, right, in our, in our dealings with people. I think we were trustworthy right from the beginning, but I became more and more convinced of the virtue of trust, of integrity, of doing what's right, of treating people right, no matter it was going to cost me money, whatever the circumstances were, trust became a huge deal. I, I wasn't as convinced about likability early on. You know, I've been raised right, so I understood the value of honesty and integrity. 
but the likability part, I was a little too sarcastic, a little too biting with, you know, in terms of the things I would say. And, um, and this is one of the reasons I'm talking about this, because I know there are a bunch of you out there that have the same thing. But as I mentioned, trust takes time to develop. And what likability does, it gives you the time needed to earn that trust. So that's the partnership between the two. If you can be more likable, and some of you are, are not unlikable from the standpoint of being an obnoxious personality, you're, unlike, you're less likable because you're too private, you're too quiet, you know, you, you hold your feelings too close, you don't reach out much, right? And I'm talking to you too. I and mean, I just don't picture in your mind, some of you, that I'm only talking to people who are just obnoxious and hard to get along with. There are a lot of wonderful people who really need to improve their likability index, if there was such a thing, right? And you need to increase the chances that people are going to respond to you in a positive way. If you've ever gone into a store, you know, or ever gone onto a car lot, that's probably a good example. And I remember going into, and I'll give an example. I went into a, Cindy and I went into a furniture store. We bought a new home. We wanted to furnish it. And we're in the store. And one of the things I look for is somebody I like. I want to, I want to give my business to somebody I like. And, I, and, and somebody breezed by and just their attitude, and if you need help, said, no, we're just looking. And we went on, and, and then we bumped into a guy, and we started talking to him. He didn't even act like he worked there. You know, we ended up in a conversation like we do with people, and we're talking about family and all that stuff. And, and I said, what are you here for? He said, well, I work here. I said, well, shoot. And then, no, then you're the guy. You know, I want you to help us. And we bought $60,000 worth of furniture from the guy. And he took a day off when it was delivered. You know, it wasn't a Kia. We weren't putting it all together, but there's some things we had to put together. help. And he was there underneath our dining room table, you know, with a wrench and a screwdriver and stuff, and helping put stuff together and took a day off to do it. That's the kind of guy it was. You know, and, and that likability is what got it, earned, caused him to get our business. Now, I, and then we got to know him better and met his wife and, fit and the trust thing kicked in. And so I'm probably taking too long on some of this, but this is it's such a valuable thing. And it can, be see, it can seem like such a little thing, maybe not worthy of time and attention and effort on your part. And I'm telling you, you're wrong. It really is worth it. It's not the most important thing. Trust and strength of character are the most important thing. But I want you, it's kind of like making a cake and not putting the icing on. Likeability is, is the icing. And you all know you like the icing. Usually as much or better than the cake. If I see a cake without icing, I'm not interested. What can I tell you? And so as we look at this, and here's a good way of saying it. One takes time, and the other makes time. Now, I've got to do a footnote in this, and should have done it at the beginning. You know, a lot of this I drew from my interaction with John Shin. John Shin had given a great talk at one of our CEO challenges about this subject. And I grabbed it and tweaked it a little bit, but I've always appreciated John for focusing me in a clear way on the power of this. Anyway, he's off, off in, uh, on the other side of the world right now for us. But uh, I appreciate John Chen and his wife and his family and his team. All right, I'm done. So, but that's a good line. Trust takes time. Likeability makes time with people until you have a chance to have the time necessary to develop the trust. And so let's discuss what we'll call what I'll call the likability factor. And I've already alluded to this. Think about someone now. I, I just did and used an example of that guy in the furniture store. Think about someone you've done business with that really impressed you. Now, okay, you got somebody in mind? Now I'll ask a question about that person. What is it about that person that made you want to know more? Know more from them, know more about who they were, know more about 
what they did, how they did it, or knew, wanted to know more about whatever products they were representing. You know, it's interesting. I was in, uh, in a store, probably a Lowe's or something, and there were guys with a display of solar. They were selling solar. And, and I have houses with this tile roof, and, and it's really tricky putting solar on. And, you know, anyway, I just didn't think this particular house we were in at the time was going to work. And, in fact, at that time and place, it was a few years ago, it didn't. But I, I went with them, and they pulled up the house on, on Google Earth, and they were looking at the roof, and they go, no, you're right. But they were, they were two really nice guys. And we ended up talking about life and business and these things and where they were headed, and they were in school at the same time. And, you know, and I really was impressed with how likable and straightforward and honest-seeming they were. Now, I didn't know that they were honest. That would have taken time to know. But I, I, it made me wish I could buy solar from them. You know, it's, you know, that's it. You know, these things are a big deal. And, and so let's ponder this process a little more. When I ask the question again, what is it about that person that made you want to know more? Here's some thoughts to consider. Was it because you knew instantly, almost magically, that you could trust that person? Probably not. Was it their knowledge about the product? Well, maybe. That didn't hurt. That might get you to believe they're competent, but it wouldn't get you to like them. I met people that know their stuff, that, uh, whose company I don't enjoy. Or maybe was it their smile or attitude? And more importantly, was it maybe the way that person made you feel? You see, smile and attitude and the way it makes other people feel about you and about themselves is called being likable. Being likable is a big deal because people don't know instantly, almost magically, that they can trust you. And if they want to know you're competent and know your stuff about the product, but these, they'll even forgive you don't know everything if you, have, if you have a pleasing personality, right? The right attitude. You make people feel good. You, they, they like you. They'd love to have you as a neighbor, a friend. If you're young, they may, may like you to date their daughter. That would be a big step, by the way. The trust one is going to be more important. And then likability on that one, speaking as a father and a grandfather. Anyway, so now we're going to shift to something. I mentioned earlier, the likability index. Again, if there were such a thing. You know, so the first key to success in any kind of a sales process, and recruiting is a sales process, is to have a very high likability index. You know, and you want that needle moving toward the right as you face the dial, old-fashioned dial. If it's a 1 to 10, you want it up there in the, in the 8 and 7 and a half, 8, 9 category. And... This is something that is a must to work on if you're in the people business. You know, and besides that, it's worth working on because it makes life more fun. It makes talking to the server at the table more fun. You being likable causes them to respond more likably. <laughs> you know, is that a word too? And, uh, and this is just, you just interact with people differently. And they like you. They look forward to seeing you again, you know. Likeability is a big deal. And so we want your index in the red zone, right? Now, again, to reemphasize, solution. In order to build trust, work in your likability. And so here we go. We're not going to have a really long webinar today. I only have a few more slides before I introduce um, the next one, the, you know, next month's. But let's, let's consider 14 ways to be more likable. Why 14? And that's how many we came up with. I wanted 15, but I came up with 14. And uh, I'm sure we could come up with a few more. But let's just, for these 14 enough. I can put seven on one slide, seven on the other. So this is a big deal. Be yourself. Now if you say, well, wait, I'm a big jerk. All right. Just the fact you can admit it about yourself is a major step toward not being one anymore. Right? Acknowledging you know, that is a big deal. But what I'm saying is, relax. 
you're, you're looking to become your best self. But if you're trying to fake it and you're uncomfortable, it's awkward, everybody knows. I want you to improve your likability by degree. It's not like you hear this webinar, got it, and then that's it. You know, you just, now you're like super likable from this moment forward. It's going to take work. It took work for me to get outside of myself. And, and what I mean is that my private nature, I don't feel an overwhelming in, inclination to interact with others, you know, or to go make an impression on them or any of those kind of things. I didn't understand the value and virtue and power of just being more outgoing and nicer to people, right? I mean, I just, I didn't, and that's too bad. I should have. I certainly have been taught those principles, but I hadn't really fully embraced them or internalized them. I'm always going to be grateful to the business and to my faith and study in my faith of scripture and things like that that reinforced these things that just helped me become a better man, which caused me to become a better husband and father and all, you know, all these really, truly important things. And of course, it blessed us in the business with wonderful relationships. But be yourself. You know, you're not trying to be Rich Thaler. You're not trying to be Ed Milet. You're trying to be Monty Holm. You're looking to be a more likable you. Now, here's some things you can start with. You know, you may not be much of a smiler. You know how some people you get around and you say something, they just smile at you. Uh, very easily, they smile at you. And you're drawn to those people. You know, if you feel it's sincere, it's warm. So smile. So that's two of the 14. Be yourself and smile. Next thing, look for opportunities to give compliments and make sure they're sincere. I often comment if somebody's got a great smile. I comment on their smile. If they look good, that day, I, I let them know they look good. Not in a weird way, right? You know, because I, I, often I'll say, like if I'm complimenting a woman, it looks really nice, I'll say, respectfully, you look really nice today. And then I turn away so they know that I'm not trying to go anywhere with it. But I pay compliments to people. I'll see people at church and compliment them on their appearance. In my role and responsibility in church, as a, as a bishop in the Mormon church, I, I'm interacting, my congregation is young people, 18 to 31. And I work with those folks, and I'm constantly complimenting and seeing sincere things and expressing things I like about them, their personality, their character, their attitude, their appearance. I've just built a habit of doing it. I'm not great at it, but I'm pretty good at it. You know, and at least I know it's important. You know, try and go around thinking of reasons or thinking of ways to compliment people. Practice. Everywhere you go, if you're at Starbucks, compliment the baristas. Is that what you call them? And, and say something nice, to the, you know, greet the person next to you in line. You know, and, and just practice. There are opportunities all around us. You're at the grocery store. Talk to the bagger. Talk to the checker. Find out things about them. I love talking to young people, and they're still in high school, and they're working, and you know, what year are you, and, and have you identified where you'd like to go to school or narrowed it down? And, you know, these things are on their mind. It's fun to talk to them about it, you know, and I compliment them then and their openness, their attitude, and anyway, all these things. You know, if you just had three of them and you started here, right, with these three things, you would become considerably more likable, you know, and... Do it everywhere you go. Another thing, look people in the eyes. Don't stare them down, right? It's not a competition or a contest. You're not being weird, and don't get too close to their face. You ever meet somebody who got, gets in your space, like they stand too close and then look you in the eyes, you know, and, and you step back and they follow you? I literally tell people, you know what, you're in my space. Take a couple of steps back. You know, I'm just not going to put up with it. So I'm not talking about being weird. But look people in the eye. Then you can look away. But look, them back, look back at them again. You know, because your eyes are expressive. 
you do want to develop kind eyes that people will people do respond to that. Right? So look people in the eye. Just not in a weird way. Hey, here's one for you. Stop looking at your phone every five seconds. When you're with somebody, give them undivided attention. Now look, I've done this too, but so don't think, you know, that I'm this is I'm like, oh, Rich has you know, really got this all together. I have to remind myself, put your dang phone down, right? And or sometimes don't bring it with you. You know, and and that's a good thing. It allows you to connect more with people, right? In in the way that we're talking about. You're not likable if you're if you don't give somebody attention. You're just saying you're not important. Like whoever's trying to make contact with me or send me some some message or email is more important than you are. Right? Now if your wife's nine and a half months pregnant, you know, and you're away from the house and something, you're looking at your phone every five seconds. I get that. But explain it then. But short of something dramatic like that, don't do it. Six, sincerely get to know people and potential clients alike, right? The same way. Treat everybody this way, by asking questions. That's called being interested. I'm going to couple that with don't, don't look like you're in a hurry. Not if you're trying to make an impression. Sometimes we are in a hurry, and we just got to keep moving. And, uh, you know, I, I, have, I have a friend actually does some work for us at one of our houses, and that guy can talk like you can't believe. I literally, if you stop, he will engage you in conversation until probably you both fall asleep. You know, and and I've got to always kind of tactfully as well as I can, I'd say, I've got to go. I've got church appointments to go to. I, Cindy and I have got to go get ready to go. He goes, you know, anyway, do whatever it is. It's legit. I'm not making it up. <clears throat> but I'm just not willing to sit there and just shoot the breeze you know, for an hour at a time um, without having some purpose. But aside from something like that, ask people questions. Have questions you, you know, it's like with a young person. I'm talking to them about school and life and where they're headed and what they want to study and, and what the game plan is and what are they hoping for. And, and it's just fun. And somebody else is working somewhere and they're at work and I'm talking to them, like I say, in a store or something like that. How long have you worked here? We um, we're with uh, my son and his and his girlfriend at dinner. We took him to dinner last night, and and uh, and I'm talking to the waiter, and he'd worked at this particular restaurant seven and a half years, you know, and you know, and I talked to him about what he did before that, and and he was a good guy, he was likable, but we were likable too, which got us better service. And I remember as we were getting up, I looked around. Because I just like to make eye contact, and he was looking, and I turned my head, and there he was, and we both waved at each other. When we see each other the next time, and we'll, we'll go to that restaurant fairly regularly, and I see that guy, we'll greet each other. We'll recognize each other because of the connection we made, asking questions about them, their life, all that kind of stuff, right? And so be yourself. Smile. Give sincere compliments. Look for opportunities, right? Look people in the eyes. Don't be looking at your phone all the time, acting distracted. Sincerely get to know people. I love sitting at a kitchen table with somebody, asking them how they met, things about their children, things about their own families. You know, how many siblings, you know, where do their folks live? What do they do? You know, how, you know, of course, all these other things. It's just, guess what? I'm likable now, you know, and I certainly I like the positive impact that it has. But I like being likable for likable's sake. Like kindness, kindness doesn't need to be an act. You know, and again, coming from the heart. All right, let's go through the other seven things. <clears throat> so here we go. Fourteen ways continued. Number eight, find areas of agreement. Being constantly argumentative is very annoying. Correcting people. You know what? You want to be likable? Don't always strive to be right, to be the person that's right. You know, and, you know, and, hey, I have trouble with that. Like, I like to be right. So I get it. <laughs> but the reality is, you know, if somebody comes in, did you hear about such and such? Sometimes it's nice to say, no, tell, tell me what you heard. And let them tell you. Right? Rather than go, yeah, I heard all about it. Then they try and talk about it, and you're correcting them, 
and telling them more that they didn't know, and he just took all the joy away from them. So you could be more right and more knowledgeable. You want to be more likable? Don't do that. You know, give them a break. I don't care if it's fourth person to tell you sometimes. You know, and then you can talk about it after they, after they tell you, you can start interacting about it. But find areas of agreement with people. You know, if you're a Republican, they're a Democrat, or vice versa, what is it in Canada? I apologize for not knowing that, the parties. Anyway, you're different. Like, don't get into that, especially in the United States right now, between Trump supporters and Trump not supporters, you know, and people deciding that's, like, all they need to know about you if you're one or the other. Yuck. You know, don't go there. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I always look for common ground. You know what? Almost without exception, there's lots of it. There's lots of common ground. You know, and you can differ radically politically and find all kinds of common ground. You're never going to know. I mean, people have a sense of the things that I stand for. They could guess some of it, but it's just not an issue to me that we disagree over some of this stuff. Now, if you think, like, stealing from people is great, right, we got a problem. If you think beating people and being, you know, violent crime is okay, all right, all right, we got, we got issues. And I'm not, I'm not going to try and be likable to you. I'm going to try and avoid you. Um, but it's obvious in most people's lives, there's usually more you agree on than you disagree, but we're really good at focusing on what we disagree on in, in our culture. And... So being argumentative is, is, a, is an antidote to likability. In other words, you want to be unlikable, that's where you want to go. So work on this. It helps. Nine, please find reasons to be optimistic about life. People like optimists, they don't like pessimists. So there, find reasons to be optimistic about life. Yeah, and... And it's, look, you know, I, I go back to presidential elections as it's so polarizing, and often is in, in many countries, but, you know, no matter who won, yeah, you know, I love my wife, I love our children, you know, my faith is strong, I love service in our church, I have this great business, I'm in business with great people, you know, we're blessed financially. We love our homes. We love our settings. We love the things we're able to do together. We love serving, period. It didn't matter who got into the White House. We, there were so many more things to be optimistic about. I love my country. I love, for our Canadians, I love your country too. You know, I mean, a lot of places that I, that I love and a lot of people that I love. And there are a lot of reasons to be optimistic about life. Work on it. It helps you. It's hard to be likable and a grump, right? It's hard to be likable and a pessimist. It's hard to be likable and always be looking at the negative side of things. And so this is important to likability. It's important to happiness too, of course. But this, this is part of what we want to do when we're working together on likability. By the way, this is a great thing to teach your people, to, have, to talk about in leadership, you know, to teach in your, in your schools. This is a great subject area, right? Show you care about people. You know, I have to work on this. I don't know that I'm really naturally hardwired for a lot of compassion. My wife is wonderful. My wife's taught me so much about that. You know, but part of it is I need, you need to act, you know, to show that you care. You see someone's having a hard day, you act on it. You know, you go over, maybe you ask them, you Okay. How are things? No, it's kind of rough. You want to talk about it? You know, there are opportunities to create that. Sometimes you, you're on your way from point A to point B, and it's important that point B get there because you're going to do something important there. But there are lots of opportunities to invest in people, you know, emotionally. Show that you care about them, right, that their feelings are important, their opinions are important, you know, that you think they're good and valuable, Back to paying sincere compliments and things like that. Here's one. Listen more than you talk. I have to catch myself on a regular basis. I wish we could be interactive here. Obviously, this is me talking. 
and it's limited in its effectiveness. I'm still getting, love the chance. We got 1,189 locations right now listening to this. And I hope you're fine. Now it's 90. I hope you find it valuable. You know, and anyway, I appreciate it. And it's good to go. Yeah. So, eight is find areas of agreement. Being constantly argumentative is annoying. Nine, find reasons to be optimistic about life. Ten, show that you care. Eleven, listen more than you talk. Twelve, this is one I wouldn't have thought of. I actually got this from John. Shake hands with two hands once in a while. I, and, I, and I thought about that. I, I could actually think of people who sometimes shake my hand with both hands. And it's, it, it's always been a, I felt it was a gesture of respect, you know, of adding warmth to their greeting. You could take this one or leave it, right? And I don't think it's important as look at them in the eye, you know, and, and that kind of thing and compliments and things of that nature. But it can be a positive thing, shaking hands with two hands. Not in a subservient way, but there it is. Here's one, you probably already occurred to you, but I, I'm not going to leave it out. Thirteen, be polite. Wow, is it hard to be, be, be likable without being polite. Politeness is valuable. I once saw a quote in a movie where somebody said, had told somebody, and this person was quoting this person, when he said, being a gentleman is someone who tr tr makes their best effort to make everyone around them feel comfortable. And he said, wow. And, and he's interesting. He said, I never got that memo. You know, but it had struck him that that was a great thing about being a good person. Is you really work on having everybody around you feel comfortable. You know, and appreciate it. Being polite is part of that. Being polite is also respectful. Think of a young person that's super polite. They calls you sir or ma'am, you know, it just jumps up to help or so. in a young person. Is, does that person make a really good impression on you? They do me. And um, I'm grateful for it. You know, I, I find people in the military, you know, where I'll interact with people that have joined our business in the military, and they call me sir, like I'm, like a, I'm a commanding officer. And they're very respectful, you know, of the, the I, you call it the line of authority in some ways, you know, or the chain of command in the military, but, and we don't have that, but there's leadership and appreciation for leadership, and, and they show it, and I, and I always find it, them very pleasant to be around. Their politeness, the respect they show makes me like them more. Enjoy their company more. Makes me makes me want to do more for them. Be around, you know. Spend longer and you know with them in their office, whatever it is. So think about that. That you want those kind of things happening to you. And lastly, number fourteen. Constantly remind yourself the first thirteen items on this list. Right. Review these things. Ponder them. Internalize them. Use them. Make them yours. <coughs> make them who you are. If you do, a lot of people are going to like you. A lot of people are going to want to be around you. A lot of people are going to want to follow you. A lot of people are going to want to keep following you. And you're going to feel better about yourself and everybody that knows you, and most importantly your family, right, are going to enjoy your company more. It's fun to laugh. It is fun to laugh. And, and look on the bright side and see the lighter side of things, you know, all of these things that we talk about and we have talked about here. And so there we are. I hope that is of use to you. And, um, and all of this will be posted um, and within a week or so. And so if you don't know where to look, ask your leadership. Hopefully they like you enough to tell you. Yeah, it's in WFG Talks on the website, WFG Talks. Not WFG, it's self-talking, but Talks in WFG. Didn't want to confuse you. If I confuse you, I won't be as likable. All right, let's talk about what we're going to do next month. This is a fun one, you know, and I haven't done it in a while, and I like doing it because it's good to remind myself of it. 
Our next webinar is why, literally why WFG is a business building superpower, which isn't a pep talk, you guys. We are a business building superpower. It's not like we're pep, you know, we're pumping ourselves up or it's false advertising. We've had thousands of people build successful businesses here, right? We're a business building superpower in North America, in the United States and Canada. And why is that? The more you understand about it, the better you can articulate it and, of course, represent it well to others in recruiting or in helping them stay in the business and understand that it's worth the battle going through it, you know, of, of what it takes to build a business. But I'm going to explain why we've had our success. It will be some intangible stuff, but very clearly some very tangible things also about our business platform about why it works so well, what it really brings. So there'd be a real logical kind of business-like explanation of some of it, along with some of the other things about heart and soul that, um, that make us great and that keep us prospering. All right? There we are. Some of you are saying some very nice things, and, uh, and I appreciate it. But I love all of this, going through this with you. So next October 11th at 9 a.m. Pacific, we'll be together talking about that superpower. And, uh, and you're all welcome. The things you're saying, you're welcome back at you. And I'll end like I, like I always try to remember to end. Thanks for being in business with us. Thanks for being a part of WFG. Thanks for giving it real effort. And if you aren't, I encourage you to do so. You'll learn great things about yourself, about others. That'll bless your life wherever you go, whatever you do, even if this isn't something that ends up being long-term. Right? But the reality is there's a lot to be gained from this. And I'd love you to build a, a great business here. I'd love to know you someday if I don't know you yet. You know, I'd love to be traveling the world like a lot of our people are traveling the world. I was communicating with Ed, and he was on the beach at Fiji and – talking with about 20 guys and brainstorming stuff in the business. And, and Monty was talking about some, some of the you know, conversations he'd had. Good stuff. You know, we have wonderful experiences that way. You know, but you know what? The stuff that fires me up the most usually is I love one-on-one -on -one mentoring. I love Cindy and I having a chance to sit down with other couples and talking about it. I love talking to the teams, too, in a big group. But I also love that one-on-one -on -one connection. You know, where you're really getting started the heart inside hearts and minds and, and are really able to help wherever they need help, whether it's in their relationship as it, as it relates to each other and, their, and in their business or whatever it might be, balancing life, so that they can go ahead and become their best selves and do something great in their business for themselves and their family that impacts their family for generations. That's what we are fortunate enough to have happen for us, and we are determined to spend the rest of our lives helping all of you who want that kind of help do the same thing. All right. We got it. We'll pour it on. All right. Someone just said they're going to memorize that list. Good for you. Who was it that said that? Marvin said that. All right. All right, everybody. I'll uh, look forward to reconnecting with you in a month, unless I visit your office or talk to you by phone or whatever it is that's happening in between now and next month for me. And I see you in person. Love you all more than you realize. And certainly appreciate and respect you more than you realize. Go get them. Let's do something special. Bye.